So you really, really suck at curling your hair. You do. And you wonder why, because everyone else can do it. Why can't you? So you're on Facebook one day and you see this two in one curling straightening iron thing. A twist iron is what they call it. And your eyes light up and you think this is it. This is the solution. And you're so excited. You order it on Amazon. It's super cheap. You wait at the door. It finally arrives and you can't get it to work. You can't get it to work. The ad looked so easy, but you cannot get the damn thing to work. Why? I'm about to show you why. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to use a two-in-one twist iron, a two-in-one hair curler straightener, and not completely kill yourself with frustration. Tip number one, if you have hair that is shoulder length or shorter, so a bob length hair, and you want a really modern, Pinterest-inspired, wavy bob, do not curl under the occipital bone. What is the occipital bone? The occipital bone is the bone that is plunging from your head right in this area. So if you take your hand, put it on your head, slide it down, you're going to feel a ridge. That ridge is the occipital bone. You want to take that hair from under that ridge and you want to wave it so that it's not bone straight, but you don't want to actually create a curl. If you create a curl, you're going to give yourself a really unmodern shape that is just not very sexy or in style at all right now. The way that I do that is I just grab my iron, my twist iron, and I clamp it down. I move it up, I bend it down, and I move it up. So basically, I'm creating a crimp with my actual iron. Once we've waved that entire section, we can move up the head now and create curl that's gonna sit on top of that. Tip number two, this is the type of product that you need smooth hair to work with. If you have very frizzy hair, kinky hair, very curly hair, you're gonna wanna blow it out before working with this product. This is just not the type of iron that's powerful enough to kind of control really crazy, frizzy, or fuzzy hair. If you guys have been here for a while, you know that my hair air dries like this. This is literally how my hair air dries. I didn't do anything different to it other than just let it air dry. So if I go ahead with this iron with my really frizzy, fuzzy, shaped, natural hair, it's not gonna look nearly as good as if I take the time to blow it out and start with a smooth texture. If you already have a smooth texture, you're really lucky because you can just go ahead and use this right away. But if you don't, don't expect to get this type of end result unless you blow your hair out first. Tip number three is section, section, section. This section is so different than the other type of sectioning that I typically do in curling hair. This took me forever to figure out. The type of section that you need to use in order to get a really good end result with this type of iron is a narrow but long section. You want a narrow horizontal but long vertical section, kind of like the shape of the iron. You want it to be narrow and long. What that's gonna do is it's gonna fit into the iron properly and allow it to curl in a way that's gonna look very, very modern and not um, like totally outdated or just straight up not work. Tip number four, what you're gonna do with that narrow long section is you're going to clamp your iron into it. You're going to twist it one time and then you're going to move down. Just one twist is all you need at the root and then move it down and it's going to automatically curl. If you have longer hair than mine, this is still gonna work. You don't have to keep twisting the iron. You really just need to twist it once at the root and then pull it through and the rest of the hair is gonna follow that pattern. Now, if you do have a bob length hair, anything shorter than the shoulders, what I recommend doing after you twist and pull is straightening out those ends. If you have a really coily bob, it's just not gonna look modern. It's not like today's look. So after we get that curl in place, I just grab the ends and I slowly run my iron through it and pull it down to create more of like a bend and a wave in the hair and less of like a curly curl. 
If you have longer hair, you can definitely leave it curlier. You don't need to straighten the ends if you don't want to. Tip number six is hand position. Hand position is so important here. If you are right-handed, you are going to keep your iron up when you curl it. So you are going to clamp your hair in, twist it once, pull it through. If you are working on your left side and you're right-handed, you're actually going to move your arm all the way up so that your flat iron is actually upside down. This sounds confusing, but it actually makes curling a lot easier. Keep your hand upright on your right side and just turn it upside down on your left side. You're not gonna start fumbling so much. This is something that a lot of people are very confused with. They just don't understand how to work around the head. If you're left-handed, you're just gonna reverse that. So on your left-hand side, you are going to keep the flat iron this way. On your right-hand side, you're going to tilt your arm over. Tip number seven, don't be afraid to break up your curls. The way that I like to break them up is just with my finger. I finger comb it through. Don't use a comb or a brush when you're doing this because you're just gonna get a really fuzzy end result. You're gonna collapse your curls, but you can use a wide tooth comb or just your fingers. When you break up the curls, that's when you get that really modern kind of lived in vibe that's really, really nice right now. Tip number eight, get yourself a texture spray. A texture spray is completely different than a hairspray. I Hairspray is going to give you a frozen or a harder kind of end result. Even a light hold hairspray is going to give you more of like a crunch and a hold. A texture spray is going to give you bulk, separation, and a beachy kind of vibe. This is great when you're doing like boho looks, modern waves, anything that you want it to look a little lived in, a little, you know, almost like a bit of a waxier look and more of a bulky look as opposed to a hairspray. If you've gotten this far, then you're gonna know that tip number nine is really important as well. If you have this exact twist iron at home, you're gonna want to crank the heat up. This is so not something that I ever say because I always say use as much heat as you need but never more than that because you don't wanna wreck your hair. This guy, this guy just isn't very powerful. He's a cheap iron from Amazon, he works, we like him, but he's not a powerful iron. So the only way that I can get this to work on myself and on my clients is if I go to the max heat. If you want to learn more about this iron, you wanna learn about its bells and whistles and all of its features, then check out my review video next. If you wanna know if you should invest in a twist iron and if it is actually better when compared to an actual flat iron using the same movement with your hands, the same sectioning, all that stuff, then check out this video next. I'll see you in a few days. Bye.